Latin creations. Welcome to the deep dive. Especially if you're a medical or medical lab student, you know how vital it is to identify microbes like quickly and accurately. So today, that's our focus. The look, the colony morphology of coagulus negative Snephalococci conines on the culture media you see every day. Mm -hmm. Think of this as your practical shortcut um, pulled straight from the textbook of diagnostic microbiology by Mahan and Lehman. A really solid source for this stuff. Our mission, unpack those key visual clues for Con S on common lab media. This deep dive is brought to you on Aladdin Creations. And understanding these visuals, the colony appearance, it's just so practical. Con S can be tricky, right? They're everywhere. Yeah, very common. So being able to quickly assess what's on the plate, that's a fundamental skill. It really speeds things up. Okay, let's jump in. First stop, almost always, is blood agar. Sheep blood agar, SBA. What's the classic con S look we're watching for? Well, the general appearance on SBA is usually pretty consistent for most con S. You're looking for uh, white to gray colonies. Oh, so gray, okay. Yeah, and they tend to have this really smooth, creamy look, mm -hmm. uh, almost buttery, if you were to touch them with a loop. Smooth, creamy, buttery, got it, in size. Typically small to medium, not huge, not tiny points usually, yeah. small to medium. And critically, they're mostly non-hemolytic, right? Yeah. No clearing around the colony. Exactly. That non-hemolytic feature is kind of the standard rule for con NS on SBA. But you know, this is where it gets interesting, where the real diagnostic clues are. The exceptions. Precisely. The source, Mahan and Lehman, it highlights some key variations especially with specific species. Like S. epidermidis, that's the one we see most often, isn't it? Right, and S. epi fits that classic description perfectly. Small to medium colonies, gray-white, totally non-hemolytic. It's your baseline con S, really. Okay, the standard picture. But you mentioned variations. What about S. saprophyticus? I remember that one standing out. It definitely can. And this is a huge visual clue, especially if you're working with urine cultures. Ah, oh, okay, how so? S. saprophyticus colonies are often a bit larger than S. epi. And the big thing about half the strains, maybe 50%, produce this noticeable yellow pigment. Yellow on blood agar. Yep. So if you see a staph from a urine sample on SBA and it's got the yellowish tint, yeah. you should immediately be thinking S. saprophyticus. That pigment is a great shortcut. A yellow staph from urine. Yeah, that's definitely something to know. Okay, what about S. hemolyticus? The name itself sounds like a hint. It does, doesn't it? And it's another key exception to that non-hemolytic rule. S. hemolyticus colonies are typically medium-sized, and they can show some beta hemolysis. Actual hemolysis, right. like strep pyogenes. Well, maybe not usually that strong. It's often described as moderate or weak hemolysis. But if you see any clearing, even faint, around a staph colony you suspect might be con an S, mm. S. hemolyticus needs to be on your radar. So SBA gives us a lot then. Color, texture, size, and these really important variations, pigment for saprophyticus, hemolysis for hemolyticus. Exactly. Those are vital differential points you can often see right away. Okay, let's switch gears. McConkey agar, MEC. What happens with con NS there? Ah, McConkey. This is where um, no growth tells you something important. No growth is the key finding. Pretty much. Remember, con NS are gram-positive bacteria. Makaki agar contains bile salts and crystal violet. What do those do? They inhibit gram positives. Exactly. They're designed to suppress organisms like staph. So if you yep. put your suspected con and S onto a maca plate. You shouldn't see anything grow. Precisely. No growth is the expected result. If you do get growth on a Macy that looks like staph, it's almost certainly not a con and S. It's a very effective rule out test. Yeah, it's a clear shortcut. Grows on MEC, probably not con and S. Okay, what about a more basic medium like nutrient agar? Yeah, nutrient agar is simpler. The textbook doesn't detail con and S specifically on it, but based on general properties, you'd expect them to grow, you know, okay. Just standard growth, <laughs> standard growth. Mm. Probably white to off-white colonies, smooth, opaque, nothing really distinctive, and obviously no hemolysis because there's no blood. It supports growth, but doesn't give those key visual clues like SBA. Gotcha. And last one, chocolate agar, C-H-O-C. Often used for fussier bugs, but conas grow there too. Oh yeah, they grow well on C-H-O-C. It's enriched, so conas have no problem. Yeah. And their look, very similar to SBA actually. Creamy, smooth, 
white colonies. But there's a catch with chocolate agar, isn't there, regarding hemolysis? That's the crucial point. Chocolate agar is made with red blood cells that have already been burrised, broken open, to release growth factors. Right, during heating. So because the cells are already clized, you completely lose the ability to determine if the bacteria itself is causing hemolysis. So you can see growth, but you can't tell if it's hemolytic S, hemolyticus, or non-hemolytic S epi just by looking at CHOC. Exactly. For that critical hemolysis question, you still need your SBA plate side by side. Okay, let's pull it all together. What are the main visual takeaways for Conan S across these plates? Think of it this way. SBA is your main morphology plate, creamy white gray, usually not hemolytic, but keep an eye out for that yellow pigment suggesting S. saprophyticus, especially in urine. And the weak hemolysis for S. hemolyticus. Right. Then MAC is your quick check. No growth supports con S. Growth probably rules it out. Nutrient agar is just basic growth confirmation. And CHOC. CHOC shows growth well, looks like SBA, but remember, no hemolysis info there. Spotting these patterns quickly, that's what makes lab work efficient. It really comes down to careful observation of the plates. And just a reminder, these insights are drawn from Mahan and Lehman's textbook of diagnostic microbiology. Definitely, and maybe a final thought for you listening. Think about how much diagnostic weight rests on these seemingly small details. Yeah, like a subtle color shift or faint clearing. Or even just the absence of growth where you might expect it. These little visual clues are often the key difference between species guiding the next steps. So what other small details in the lab or even in clinical finds hold that kind of major diagnostic power? Something to definitely think about next time you're looking at cultures.